Yeah, it's a given Tuesday. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii. And we're talking about Think Tech Tech Talks. Once in a while, we like to do tech. Okay, and this uh, show is about um, MPTS, which is uh, a special way to clean up electrical current uh, that Brian Rogers is going to tell about. And he's with TransPower in uh, Texas. And uh, Valerie Shoup is an engineer. Also in Texas, they have separate companies, but they work together on a device that's an MPTS device, which actually cleans up electrical power. This is a very exciting show because it involves the Volga River uh, in, in, um, in Russia. It involves the Tsar. Uh, it involves, uh, gee whiz, uh, it, it involves the 1840s. Those were the good old days. Uh, they didn't have pandemics that year. Um, and uh, all in all, this is really worth learning about. This is a, the kind of thing that, that sort of sets the stage for the industrial revolution to follow. So exciting. Welcome to the show, Brian, Valerie. Nice to see you guys. Good to be here. Nice to see you, Jay. So, uh, Brian, tell us about MPTS. Uh, you know, what is it? And tell us about the Volga River. Uh, and, uh, oh, and Jacoby. <laughs> Jacoby, we want to know about Jacoby. Okay, awesome. All right, so what we have is called a maximum power transfer solution and the MPTS unit. And where it comes from was we had a team that was doing R&D in Denver in, in 2001. And they were working as a subcontractor to DuPont. They were working on a desalination plant. And what they were trying to do was make electric motors more efficient. And one day while they're working, one of their neighbors walks in with a lamp, a fluorescent lamp and says, hey, geniuses, can y'all fix this? And they said, sure, let's take a look. And so they looked at it. They determined that the ballast had burned out. And so they pulled the ballast out and left the wires just hanging loose. And, and, uh, and the guy left the, the lamp with them and they ordered him a new one. A couple days later, one of the scientists in the lab is walking around with the circuit board that runs this idea of trying to make electric motors more efficient. And for no reason at all, without anybody's permission, he wires it in to the lamp and plugs it in and the lights come on. Well, that set off every scientist in the lab. Why did the lights come on? And it actually takes them a year to figure out what happened and and what had happened is they had solved a theorem called that it's called the maximum power transfer theorem mpts that, yep well yep the and the uh the, the theorem had had been written in 1840 by a man named moritz von jacobi he was german born jewish and so he was the einstein of his day and, and in 1840, this man is working for the czar in Russia, like you said a while ago, and he is um, he's working on electric motors and batteries, so way ahead of his time in 1840. And he builds a boat, and the boat actually can carry 14 people. He puts in the batteries, he puts in the electric motor, he has to, to invent some kind of a propeller because there aren't propellers yet. And the boat is actually able to go three miles an hour upstream on the river and um and what and the but the batteries fail sooner than jacoby thought they were going to fail and so he does the trip again and does the trip again he does it like 10 times and it's always failing early and so this guy being the great mathematician scientist that he was sits down and says well i'm going to write something that's going to get the most power from those batteries to that motor get the and and so he writes what's called the maximum power transfer th theorem today called jacoby's law and and so now the law doesn't get solved it doesn't so get solved until computers get fast enough and in 1996 the engineers at bose solved it at really low power levels so for their uh, sound systems and then five years later is in 2001 is when the the transpower engineers were working for DuPont and that and their neighbor walks in with the lamp. And so it was solved by accident, basically. Um, they uh, but, you know, a lot of great things happen by accident. So. So, Valerie, I, I take it that solved means that you 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 want to set things up 
so that you get it to work best. Um, but how, how does that how does that work? How is this sort of like uh, Edison or Tesla, where you do it sort of trial and error? Is that why solving takes so long, requires so much time? Um, how do I start? So, so if I wanted to solve Jacoby's law myself, what would I do? Uh, well, I mean, the important thing is, is you have to figure out how to get the energy from point A to point B, right? So, so a lot of energy today is lost. It's lost either in heat, it's lost in a number of ways. And that's why equipment is inefficient, right? So it's not using all of the energy that is delivered to it. So the, what the MPTS, it takes all that energy that's not delivered to the equipment and it recycles it and puts it back in the system. And that's why we say that they solved Jacoby's law because the energy coming into the system is being used in the system. Ah, okay. So you, you have to have a device that will do all this. Um, and I guess there's a lot of, what, what do you need in this device? Um, what, do you, what do you need? What kind of resources, electronic devices do you need within the MPTS device uh, to achieve this? Well, it's just like with your cell phone, right? You have your motherboard with all these computer algorithms in there. And I mean, it's amazing. I can't figure out how the cell phone works, right? It amazes me that I can get on my cell phone and I can find my way and I can make a phone call. Well, the MPTS works just like a cell phone because it's a surge suppressor. It also addresses harmonics three to 51 dynamically and it recycles the excess energy and puts it back into the system. So it's basically a device acting like a cell phone for your electrical power system in your building. So uh, just before we go too much further, harmonics, what is that? So when you have different, okay, so back in the day, we didn't have a lot of equipment failures. Why was that? Because everything in the building what took AC electricity. So nowadays we have a lot of DC devices. We have variable frequency drives, things that are changing uh, in frequency. So what harmonics are, it's when the sine waves don't match up. Okay, so we, when you have DC devices running in an AC system, your sine waves are out of sync with each other. And that's how you get end up with harmonics. It's kind of like going down a highway with too many cars and the highway gets backed up. Well, that's what happens when you mix DC uh, with AC power. It's like being on a freeway and so all the cars are backing up. And so you need to take care of that traffic jam, right? So the MPTS is taking care of that electrical traffic jam and putting that excess power back into the system. Yeah, that harmonic sounds like a big part of that then. So this has been going on, you know, as uh, Brian said, how long has it been going on? When was this um, solving of uh, Jacoby's theorem? When, when did that ha happen here in recent times? It ha they solved it in 2001, yeah. but they didn't make the first prototype of the MPTS unit until 2008 when they finally, it, it dawned on them that it made sense to try to clean up the electricity in an entire building mm -hmm. rather than uh, just a light bulb, which is what had happened in 2001 when the well, light bulb turned on. Has to be significant challenges of going from one light bulb to a whole building. Uh, yeah, tremendous, tremendous challenges. There were 22 engineers and and basically 10 years of of research went into it. They um, they you can say they really made it when in. 2013 when underwriters laboratories gave them the stamp of approval in march of 2013 so that's, that it wouldn't it wouldn't catch fire and burn the right building down. well the in <laughs> a bigger deal than that was the underwriters laboratory had required them to give them 16 mpts units for the testing and when the underwriters laboratories guys figured out what the mpts was doing in terms of creating a, a, a clean electrical environment they bought all 16 units and said, oh, you can't have these back. We want them because they're doing all this testing that they need pure electric environments in. And they, they told uh, our now CEO, 
um, Adil Khan, they told him that they'd spent $6 million trying to create a clean and electrical environment and Adil and his team had done it. Yeah. Well, this is barely, not even 10, uh, 20 years ago. How come I didn't see this on the front page of the New York Times, the Washington Post, um, and every other um, newspaper and technical magazine that I could like, how come this kind of thing hasn't, hasn't been, you know, made ubiquitous around the world? How come? Um, that's a good question. I've only been with TransPower for two years. And, and pretty much what I've picked up on is, is that a deal doesn't believe in advertising. So that's a bad thing from my standpoint. Uh, so he doesn't go with a lot of TV or anything. And he, uh, and, and I think at first, maybe he was scared of, of some of the, the bigger boys stealing the idea. You know, even though I think that they've got to solve Jacoby's law, you know, and how long is that going to take? And are they going to even be able to do it? No way to know. So who is the deal? A deal con. Yeah. Okay. So, so he's president and CEO of TransPower Company. He was running the team in 2001 that solved uh, Jacoby's law. Did he get and, a patent out of it? Oh, yeah. They've got patents in 28 countries now. And uh, and it is all around the world. It's just more word of mouth. Um, so it's in Dubai. Uh, it's in uh, in New Zealand. It's in Australia. It's in Switzerland. It's in Canada. It's in Mexico. But there's just but it's not thousands of units yet. So I, I do think that it, there'll be a time when there will be thousands of units because um, but at this point, we get Valerie, caught. Valerie, if I wanted to make an MPTS unit, what would I need aside from uh, two cans and a string? I don't think you. I don't think you could make it. <laughs> it it would be very difficult. I, okay. My question is, could you make a cell phone? I don't think so. I could. I couldn't make an MPTS <laughs> unit either. I just know how it operates and and it's honestly. You say why is it not more widely because. People can't believe that it saves energy. And that's the differentiator between MPTS and all of these other power factor devices that all these big companies are selling. So they will sell you power factor correction equipment. They'll sell you surge suppressors. They'll sell you uh, harmonic filters. All of these things are in this one device, but what it also does is it recycles energy and people can't wrap their minds around that. I couldn't wrap my mind around it for a long time until I started seeing the data because what people will tell you is, oh, well, power conditioners don't save energy. And I'm, just a lot, I'm telling them, you're right. Power conditioners do not save energy, but MPTS does. It's the only device like it in the world. Well, you know, there's all this, um, to go a step further on that, there's, you know, people are trying to be efficient now. They're into clean, green energy, renewables, energy efficiency at home. I mean, in Hawaii, we have a lot of companies that specialize in coming around to your house and consulting with you and telling you how to make your house more efficient, you know, and save, save money, um, you know, in terms of your energy bill. So is there a device? I mean, can I buy a device such as the one, uh, you know, that Brian mentioned, the light bulb device uh, and put it in my house? That would, you know, that would be very appealing on the market, wouldn't it? Well, actually, uh, there, I see TransPower is negotiating with Costco to do a, a uh, homeowner's size device, but it's still going to be expensive, though, because uh, it's it's. $2,500, $3,000. So you got to have a big house for that to make sense. Why is it so expensive? Is it, is it because, um, you know, uh, TransPower just wants the money or is it because it's, it's it, the cost of, um, you know, making the device is expensive? It's the cost of making the device. It's a lot, there's a lot of, uh, of expensive electronics in the device. Mm -hmm. And so, and, um, and I'm not sure that houses are really going to have enough problems that it makes sense. It's much more uh, industry that has problems. Okay, you have some charts and graphs. You want to sh show us how um, you know an installed M 
MPTS unit is going to help a given building. And I would like to know uh, the metrics about how much help it will actually provide. Okay, yeah, let, let's do that. If you can show the, the first picture of installed units. And okay, so at the bottom, left to right, that, that first one is in a hospital. The second one is in a pump station for for a water uh, provider in, that's in the Denver area. And then the third one is in a, uh, a fruit processing plant that's near Fresno, California. And the fourth one is actually at a, uh, a government center like a like a uh, courthouse. And so but in each case, you can see the units and then you can see how they're they're wired in. And so they have to be 30 feet from the main electric panel in each case. Why? Um, why? Uh, loss, losses beyond that. So now, it, can we look at the, the second diagram? So the second diagram, what we're doing is this is an actual building and that's in Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles. And I've got them labeled M MPTS 1, 2, and 3. And that number one is, is really primarily on the mechanical panel, which is the chiller. And so the air conditioning for the whole building. Two is, is back on the main panels. It's picking up the other sub panel and, and miscellaneous stuff, including the, on the main panels, the elevators and lighting and stuff. And then uh, number three, MPTS number three is picking up everything else. Every, everything else. And number three is the closest to the mains. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, to the uh, to the actual uh, meters coming in from the electric company. And number one is the farthest away from it. And so, if we could look at the the next the next slide, then this is called this is a a live dashboard. And let's see, it's very small for me right now, but the um, uh, what what we've got is a, a power factor. That's the red. It'll be the second one on from the left at the top. And what's that power factor showing? Point eight eight or something like that. Or... It's point eight zero three. Okay. The power factor, and so that is what the building is actually. And then after the power is cleaned up at the MPTS unit, it's cleaning the power up. So the power factor is 0.971. What's a power factor and why do I care about it? So power factor is an indicator of how efficiently your building is using electricity. So if you have a low power factor, your building is extremely inefficient and you probably have a high degree of harmonics. When you have a high degree of harmonics, you will also have a high degree of equipment failure because harmonics damage all the equipment in your building. By way of vibration or something else? Harmonics often cause, cause heat, a lot of heat, and it's really the heat that like breaks down the grease and pumps and motors and that type of thing. Um, uh, people who own buildings normally do infrared testing on their buildings and they'll uh, be able to detect hot spots, but your motors will run hotter and all your equipment will run hotter when you have a lot of harmonics in the system. Okay, so efficiency of eight uh, going to nine, what, is that, what does that mean in terms of um, overall efficiency and, and cost? Well, let's look at the, 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 the chart again. The third line down at the bottom uh, it says what the load power, I mean, the, this, this is amps now, what the load amps were and what the, um, what the uh, main amps are. So the, the amps that are coming from the power company, how many are, and then, but what the actual equipment has, needs to, to operate. And what's happening is in that case on uh, that MPTS unit, it's, that's a savings of 47.1 amps, which turns out to be 39 kilowatts. 
So right now we're saving 39 kilowatts in in this particular uh, on that particular MPTS unit. Now, what does that What does that mean in California in dollars? Do you have any idea? Uh, they're paying about somewhere around uh, 20 cents a kilowatt hour. So so whatever 39 times 20 cents for that hour is, mm -hmm. and then. Um, it's, you know, so this, this whole system is paying for itself in about two years in Los Angeles and they have three MPTS units. And so now the list, can we go to the, uh, other chart? The other chart is, is the one that's connected to, um, that's closest to the meters. And so what the power company is seeing is that 0.999. You see that in the blue, mm -hmm. but the power factor is what? I can't read it. Nine point nine nine two. Okay, nine nine two, and then it's nine nine nine. So that one has we've gotten we've already gone through MPTS three, through MPTS two, to MPTS one, and and so they're all talking together. They have artificial intelligence, and so they talk, and they've handed off the to finally the uh there's almost no loss uh, from this from the power company standpoint it's 0.999 in power factor then um that last one let's see mpts3 is saving 37.8 amps which is 31.4 kilowatts the whole building is saving 82.553 kilowatts when you add all three of the MPTSs together. And so where is that savings coming from? We're removing the inefficiencies. See the load in each case where it was, what the load power factor was and the load amps, that, that's what the uh, building was requiring. But because we've recycled the problem power, the harmonics and what's also called KVAR, which is reactive power, it's uh, reactive power is like, uh, you know, motors run in a circle, but the, the electricity is coming in and, the, and half of the motors running against the, the uh, incoming electricity. And then, and then and even though it's alternating current, well, then in the other half of the motor is running against the, uh, the other half of the alternating current. So that causes losses. It's called KVAR. And so the MPTS is able to recycle the KVAR and it actually is removing the harmonics it it flushes them just like it was a water drain and it was all, like it was all water and there was a drain in the middle of the floor and it flushes that out and <clears throat> and it removes the the harmful part recycles the kvar and suddenly we've got 82 kilowatts that we wouldn't have had so it's impressive so um you know how long does it take to install this if i if i called you up Brian uh, and Valerie and say, look, uh, I got a building uh, and I want to put this kind of equipment in my building and save that 82 kilowatts. How long would it take you to do that? Once you have the equipment in place, you can, in you can install it in a day. You can mm -hmm. install it and commission it in a day. So obviously you'd have to order the equipment and we'd have to make it and then uh, ship it to you. Is it, is it big and heavy um, or, is it, or is it small and light? The, uh, the size that we were looking at in the photograph, Swallow Grow, weigh about 800 pounds. Mm. So and, that's, that's a big yeah, shipment. Yeah. yeah, and so and this, in that building that we were showing, uh, there were three of those units that weigh 800 pounds. And so, uh, but it's better to put smaller ones because the next size up is a 490 amp that's a 240 amp that we were talking and the next size up is 490 amps and it weighs like 1800 pounds and um, but it's better to go with more of the 240s than one big uh 490 because yeah, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, are these are these why why is it better to have a, a, a bunch of smaller ones? Getting closer to the loads and getting closer to the problems. Like the, one of the biggest problems in the building is the chiller, 
And then the next, probably the next biggest problem in the building is the elevator. The elevator only uses half of the electricity delivered to it. The chiller uses 80%, maybe, and sometimes it drops to where they're only using 70%. But uh, so those are your two biggest problems. Now, if you're in a factory though, your factory equipment could all be running 70, only using 70% or 60% mm -hmm. of the electricity that's being delivered to them. So, so we need to be closer to the loads and, and then we, we clean up the problems there. So uh, where, where are these uh, d uh, devices manufactured? Are they manufactured in, in Texas? Are they manufactured in the United States? Uh, you have a factory? Is there a factory? Yeah, it's in Atlanta. So they, it's, it's all US parts, except there's one piece that comes out of Germany uh, that actually deals with the harmonics. And, and it's just because it's the best in the world. And we couldn't beat it with, there's no American part right now that's beating that German part. So if I wanted, to, I wanted to outfit the building you described with the, you know, the three separate MPTS units, <clears throat> what, give me a rough range about what that would cost uh, to, to install that in the building. Those 240, 240 amp units were 50,000 each. And then uh, installs maybe five thousand each, so probably one hundred sixty-five thousand, and you've got that. But they're recapturing that one hundred sixty-five thousand inside of two years there in Los Angeles. And y'all, I understand your situation. You got my text in there. The y'all, the uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, the uh, and y'all have got a lot higher electrical rates in Hawaii than than we do in Texas. That's for sure. We're working on that. The other thing is, okay, two years, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it pays for itself in two years, but how long do these units last? Do they deteriorate? After all, there's a big load. Um, they're sophisticated designs. Uh, uh, are there secondary effects of handling, um, you know, all this power that make them deteriorate over time? How long, do, what's the useful life? It's... Uh... 20 years basically, uh, but you've got to, you know, if you, as long as you're taking care of it, there are actually are no moving parts and uh, except for cooling fans. And so it has cooling fans and those, the filters on the fans need to be changed every year and they need to be checked. And in all the other parts, we've, we've got a, a package that's $500 worth of parts and we, and you can sit on your shelf and, and one of your engineers can just go in and say, oh, this one's this one quit. And then they they plug that in and instead. So it's uh, it's going to last for a long time. And if it's well, if it's well maintained, it's going to last for a long time. Well, I, you know, it strikes me that, um, you know, this this is useful for a building owner, uh, although the economics are. Um, you know, you have to factor in, for example, in a, in a, in a, in a standard office building, the, the owner is going to try to pass through the expense to the tenants, either in, in one lump sum or, uh, you know, it's kind of an assessment or on a monthly basis. Uh, and so it, it's not going to fall on him. It's going to ultimately fall on the tenants. And so that's an interesting economics question. I'm sure that if you're selling to landlords, they're, they're going to be talking about this kind of thing. But what strikes me is that in in the um, in the in the final analysis, um, this is a pretty exciting technology, and uh, that if it's miniaturized and, and made maybe cheaper somewhere, uh, who knows? I, I you know China still does present itself as a place where this could be manufact manufactured. Um, you could put it in computers. You could put it in all kinds of electronic gear, little ones, little ones, that big. Uh, and you could save energy, save harmonics, save deterioration to the equipment and, and have a lot of benefits. Uh, have to bring the cost of manufacture down um, right. and it'd have to be licensing out to whoever was gonna market it because you know, marketing to office buildings is, is one kettle of fish, M marketing to you know, a global supply of computers and com computer devices, that's another kettle of fish. Yeah. I mean, do, you, do you see that happening or, or, or not? Well, let me tell you, 
a quick story. Well, a real quick story on <laughs> that. Adil told me that some Koreans showed up at at Transpower Company, and they had rebuilt the MPTS unit. They had taken it. They'd done reverse engineering. They put it all together, and and they brought it to him. And he said it was beautiful. And and then they said, can you make it work? And the problem was that. It gets down to a motherboard and a chip, and the chip's got Jacoby's Law on it, and it does Jacoby's Law, the solution to Jacoby's Law, four million times a second. And then the motherboard is able to make changes of the electrical system up to 20,000 per second, 20,000 times a second. Normally, they only need to change it 400 or 600 or 800 different things need to be changed. So it's way, way ahead of the schedule. But the, anyway, the Koreans were had done everything right. But once they broke into the black box that had the motherboard in it, they corrupted it and it wouldn't work. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. And then so 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 that's the that's the real magic. The rest of it, they could copy. And yeah. uh, now uh, you, you mentioned putting it like in computers and things. It, it actually doesn't need to be in computers because they're they are dc power so they're direct current and don't need they're not having the losses dc power doesn't have the same kind of losses that ac power has but it's dangerous like 12 volts of dc can kill you you know if you read your car battery and you did it wrong and you get stuck holding it 12 volts of dc can kill you but you could with ac you can reach out and and actually tap that 110 volts that's at your house you're not going to like it it's going to bite you but it's not going to grab you and kill you mm -hmm. okay so I'll... really where mpts is oh i'm sorry i was just going to mention really the best places for mpts are things like hospitals where you have millions of dollars of electrical equipment that you want to protect data centers where you have uh, all this precious data that needs to be protected I see it as an insurance policy because of it does uh, it's a surge suppressor as well as saving energy. The real savings here is in extending the life of your equipment and protecting your equipment from surges, spikes that all buildings experience. So I would say it's a must on hospitals. It's a must on manufacturing plants. It's a must on data centers. We're almost out of time, you guys, and I want to ask you one more question. Just uh, it's left un, unresolved in my mind is so Jacoby made the theorem. This this you know could have enormous effect going forward after a delay of uh, oh my gosh, 1840 till now. Um, but but did he ever solve the theorem? No, he didn't solve his own theorem. Couldn't solve his own theorem. And actually, Adil Khan told me they said Jacoby has no idea how good a job he did writing the theorem. That that it the theorem is magic. And uh, and so uh, no, he couldn't solve his own theorem. Had to get to computers, and and be in fast enough computers for it to be solved. How interesting. Okay, so it's Transpower in Dallas. Did you say? And, well, based uh, out of Denver. Based out of Denver, uh, and you're in Dallas. Got it. Okay. And Valerie, uh, you're you're in Dallas with a su yes. sustainable. What is it? Heritage Institute Herit of Sustainability. All right, you guys. Thank you very much for coming on the show and telling us about this really important technology. And I hope we see it again. Um, I hope it it becomes ubiquitous. I think uh, ultimately somebody somebody who watches Think Tech right now will pick up on this, and you know they'll be knocking a pad you know to your door. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian and, and Valerie.